Hello, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Flourish Peters. I'm the lead pastor of the Logic Church, the love of God in Christ Church. What you're about to hear will change your life forever because it is the word of His grace. I commend you to God and the word of His grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among the saints. Acts 20 verse 32. This will bless you. Listen, invite your friends to join in. I'll see you in a bit. What you're looking for is looking for you. What you're pursuing will start pursuing you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in Galatians chapter 3 this evening. It's good to see all our brethren from London Church, Mosun, Mosun's older brother and the fiance who's get London Church. Can you stand up, please? Let's just appreciate all of you from London. <laughs> Amen. That's that's literally one of the people we're looking at ordaining as one of our pastors in London Church. She said, eh? <laughs> Amen. And these two lovebirds are getting married on Saturday from Logic London. Amen. L Lagos, wake up now. <laughs> this one, that one from Logic Canada. They are watching. They are getting married in October. This one's August. MVP and co. Cool. Let's just give God praise for them. You may be seated in the presence of God. <laughs> MVP, Larry and co. Cool. Do something before something do you. <laughs> Amen. Auntie Glad, it's good to see you this evening again. Thank you very much. That is one of the ladies who chased us from London to Lagos just to hear us. And good to see you, woman of God. It's good to see all of you. Galatians chapter 3. Let's go into Galatians chapter 3. How many of you are enjoying the systematic theology from the book of Galatians? Chapter 1, 2, 3. Pray for me. I'm off to Abuja tomorrow. I'm back on Saturday morning. We are praying six hours on Saturday from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So drop your prayer points. Um, hello at thelogicchurch.org. If you have prayer points, just drop it. 6 hours, 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can join coming and just pray. Um, I come in from, sat from Saturday morning just to do an hour here before going to the wedding. So keep me in your prayers. I have two meetings tomorrow evening with Logic, Logic Abuja. Friday evening, another meeting. And then Saturday, uh, I'll be here. So keep me in your prayers, okay? And if you have folks, friends from Abuja, tell them to join Logic Abuja tomorrow evening. Um, I, I, want, I want to see if I can run through epignosis with them and the ROAD principle just to get them going strong. Pastor Cherish and the wife are doing a fantastic job there. Keep them in your prayers. Fantastic job there. Keep them in your prayers. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. I want to see if you found it. Say amen. It's literally on the screen. So we can read together. Amen. So Galatians chapter 1. Who remembers one thing from the book of Galatians chapter 1 that we spoke about? Who remembers something from Galatians chapter 1 that we spoke about? Something in Galatians chapter 1. S sorry? To the gospel of God's grace. Identifying the gospel of God's grace. Um, Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6 to 9 talks about the message of God's grace as the message of the gospel. Galatians chapter 2, you find the peace square fight in Galatians chapter 2. What else is significant in Galatians chapter 2? How that Paul conferred not with flesh and blood. Establishing that no man is justified by circumcision. We are justified by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. Oh foolish Galatians. Paul became very temperamental here in chapter 3 because of what happened in chapter 2. Oh foolish, oh foolish Galatians who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus... Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among, keep it. So what is the truth? Jesus crucified. That you should not obey the truth. What is the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was crucified. That's the truth. Yeah. Verse 2, let's go. This only would I learn of you received so King James speaks in a way, this only will I ask you. That's what, what it means by will I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law. So watch this. In, the, in verse 2, Apostle Paul is exchanging grace for spirit. So ideally you should have read, receive ye the 
grace of God by the works of the law. He says, receive ye the spirit. So any spirit that is not teaching grace is not the spirit of God. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Verse 4, verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So Paul is saying in verse 3, what started in the spirit cannot be improved on in the flesh. What started by faith cannot be improved by works. What grace started, works cannot assist. Because some of you think that hey, now that we are saved by grace, we will not save to God. God will not give. How did you even say that in Larry? Well, God, not, yes, will not give us grace to do the work. No, 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 no. You you can mix works with grace. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you are not saved by grace to not enter works. No, that's not what it means. You are saved by grace to enter grace, to stay in grace, to grow in grace, to to increase in grace, and to and grace. And then sleep in grace and wake up in grace, if you know what I mean. And from, to, from grace, you enter great grace. Then you now enter exceeding grace. You now get supernatural grace. Unsearchable grace. Unending grace. The unforced freedom of grace. We just, we, that, that's how we're going. It's just grace. From grace to grace. Grace on top of grace. That's the meaning of that scripture. That, we, that he, he, Jesus Christ came from grace to grace. It's grace on top. So the only thing grace has to supply is grace. Are you listening to me? The only thing grace has in its ability to supply is grace. Grace cannot supply to you works. Verse 4, let's go. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Next verse, verse 5. He therefore that ministered to you, the spirit, and worketh miracles amongst you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. It's faith. Next verse. Let's go. Even as Abraham believed God and was accounted. Keep this scripture. Because now, let me say this. The, the epistles were, the, we say the epistles are proper explanation of the scriptures. So even the epistles came out of the writings of the scriptures. So even in this verse, the writer is referring to Genesis chapter what? 15 verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. That means Abraham believed God and God credited his account in the spirit. Yes. It was accounted to him for righteousness. That means because of what you did. Mm, I like it. I've put something in your account. You, don't, you did not suffer for it. But because you believed me, it is accounted to you. In the same way, every time we receive salvation and we believe in the finished work, there is a deposit already in your account. You can now activate and receive it. It's by believing. Abraham believed God and he was accounted. That's, that's an accounting term for him as righteousness. That means you came late, but when they brought the, the what do you call those things that they write? Attendance sheet, it was early there. Because the person feeling it said, Oh, she, she believes me, and I'm writing it. And that's what it is. Next verse. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are same as the children of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before. The gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed shall all the nations be blessed. How did Abraham receive the gospel in a dispensation that was not grace? So God preached the gospel to Abraham. That's what the Bible says. So Abraham had the gospel. So that thing that Abraham believed is Abraham believed the gospel and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You understand that? So when, like I said to you before, when Moses writes, you can correct him. You understand it? So when you read that thing Moses wrote in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 6, how do you read it? Abraham believed the gospel and he was counted unto him for righteousness. So that Abraham believed God, what is the God that Abraham believed? He believed the gospel. 
are, are you are hearing? Abraham believed the grace message and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Am, am, I, am I communicating? So, many ways you would have said Abraham would have received, um, received the gospel. Mm. Chica, come. So, Abraham had Isaac. Isaac was not seven years old. Isaac was old enough. At that point, Abraham was in his 90s. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Oh, you don't know the story? You put it not to Sunday school at all. Oh. Over 100. God bless you. So this guy was strong enough to deal with Abraham. But whilst they were going, Isaac asked Abraham, Father, I see the wood and I see the knife. But where is the lamb? <laughs> Until I say, you won't use me. <laughs> this guy should have known that my father is up to something. Eh? If it's the regular ninja boy. <laughs> Ingo sacrifice my boss. <laughs> Then you go there first. So you, you, you just jack burn, right? So they got to the altar. He did not resist with Abraham. At that time, Isaac was a shadow of Christ that would not struggle with the father on the cross. So he says, I have the wood, which is the cross. I have the knife, the fire, which is the torture. But where is the lamb? Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. Abraham did not say, God will provide for himself. That's not the same. God will provide himself a lamb. At that point, Isaac became a shadow of Christ that would not struggle with Jesus on the cross. For the Bible says none of his bones were broken. At that point when Abraham took the knife and was going to kill Isaac, God said to Abraham, wait. The instruction is start hearing what God is saying, not what he said. If it was some of you and me, we will kill the boy. He will become a martyr, not a sacrifice. What he's saying, not what he said. But the truth is, ooh. how do I explain this? Isaac came out of the dead loins of Abraham. So Isaac was a product of resurrection. So Abraham said he was sure that God who brought Isaac from the dead could bring him out of the dead. That's the gospel. So Abraham says, God who brought this boy out of my dead body can bring him back from the dead. So in a figure... Abraham received Jesus. The gospel was downloaded to Abraham. That mountain, if you look behind his Calvary, where Jesus died, was the same mountain. So Abraham is going to kill Isaac. God says to Abraham, Stop, Abraham, I know, I know that you really love me. The cry of God becomes the cry of the believer in the New Testament. We are the one now shouting to God, God, I know, I know that you really love me because you killed your son for me. Thank you. So that shout that God was shouting from heaven is the cry of the believer today. God is, now I know that you love me, Abraham. That's what we do. Father, I know that you love me because you did not withhold your son from me. Next verse, verse 9. Let's go. So then, they which be faith, be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Mm. You're blessed. You're blessed. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. This is the problem, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Philip. 
For it is written, Cost is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Keep the scripture. You know what this means? The law is not just 10 commandments. It's 600 and what? 13 rules and regulations. 613 plus 10 is... So this scripture says, if you break one, you break all. And if you cannot fulfill all, you are cursed. See it now. Cost is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you want to do the law, you must be ready to do everything. 99% of the law is 0% full-blown cost. 99, yes, 99% of the law is equal to zero and the consequence is full-blown cost. How are you going to cope? Six, that, see, you are watching for 613, 23 rules and regulations. You break one, course. Start again. No, 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 no second chance. Bam. You start again. So back to square one. It's a staircase that never leads you anywhere. You just... Yeah. See the next verse. Let's go. But that no man is justified by the law... In, that, in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. So I'm not living by law, I'm living by faith. So faith compressed the 623 rules and regulation and say, grace. So why do, you, why do you want to choose law? And the law, you can't do it half current. You have to full-blown law or full-blown grace. There's no DJ. Even law does not like DJ. Law does not want you to DJ him. Go on full blown law. Next verse. And the law is not of faith, but that the man that doeth them shall live in them. That means, <laughs> are you seeing this? The law is not of faith, but if you decide to do it, you will live in it. Next verse. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cost for us, for it is written, cost is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing, not blessings, the blessing. The blessing is a person, not cars. The blessing is a person, not houses. That the blessing, singular, of Abraham might come upon Gentiles, Nigerians like you and I. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit. Not the promise of the spirit. It's King James' mistake there. It's not the promise of, it's the promised spirit. Not the promise of the spirit. The promised spirit through faith. Next verse. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. So I'm speaking by example. That's what he means by this. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulate or added thereto. Verse 16, let's go. Now to Abraham and his seed. No seeds. Where the promise is made. He said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. So the child that God promised Abraham is not Isaac, it's Jesus. The child that God promised Abraham that will give you a son. It's not Isaac. Isaac is a seed. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And to thy seed, which is what? Isaac? Christ. That's it. Next verse, 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. That means, Usha, Christ precedes the law. Oh, God. So people think, when the law now happened, God now said, oh, let me bring Christ. No, no, no. Christ was before the law. God does not react. God is proactive. The law was an added addendum over Sabi between Moses and the Israelites. Let God give us rule and regulation that we'll be working with. See now, the law which was 430 years after So the law came, so we say, you pay the law, you, when we, no, listen to me. 
this thing started before the law. The distance between the promise and the law, 430 years. Cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non effect. That this one that happened 430 years cannot destroy what God promised Abraham from the beginning in Christ. Next verse. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. That means if this inheritance that God says he will give Abraham, if it is of law, then there's no promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. I promise you car. You self give me the car. Period. I can't, I can't be working for what you promised me. You promised me so I should work for it. It's a transaction now. God doesn't do transaction. He does gifts. So somebody put on, on, on line, God doesn't do sales. He does full price. If you're not willing to pay the full price, I say, sir, God doesn't do sales. You are right. He does gifts. Because if he puts full price, none of us can pay the full price. We can't afford it. Stop raising that your boil in your armpit. Like, you have done one thing that you, are, you think that you, we cannot afford it. We can't fit. Next verse. Wherefore, then, what, what served the law? It was added because of transgressions, Moses, oh, till the seed should come. That means till Jesus should come, to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of, so the law was ordained by who? Not God. Not God. Say God gave them law. No, see I'm now. It was ordained by angels in the hand of a maid. Who's that made it to? Moses. Moses. Brother Mo. Next verse. Is the AC too cold for you guys? Are you, are you all right good? Okay, just check it. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Next verse. Let's go. Is the Lord then against the promises of God? No, God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the law could not give life. The law just showed you the end of yourself that you cannot do without grace. So the law was supposed to bring us to school. But how, this law was a schoolmaster to bring us to grace. Now that the law has brought us to grace, the law's work has finished. Come and be going home. That's what it means. You take an Uber, drop you at home. He drops you and what? He, he, they enter your house with you, except those people who used to pay in kind too. I, I hear it too. Come to Jesus. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Next verse, verse 22. But the scripture had concluded all on that scene that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that... Is this clear? Is this boring to you? Okay. May Bible study not be boring to you in Jesus' name. <laughs> but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under, unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Verse 24, let's go. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the law shows you how you cannot do without Christ. Now that you have come to Christ, leave the law alone. It has done its work. Stop flirting with the law. That's it. That we might be justified by faith. Verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That after now you have received faith to receive Christ, you have no business with... First of all, this law was written for Jews, not Gentiles who... We crashed the party. It's not our business. So. so this law in the first place was not to us. Christ came to redeem the Jews from the law and to bring the Gentiles into the blessing. Do you hear what I said? Christ came to redeem the Jews from the law and bring Gentiles to the blessing. But Gentiles, we can't carry the law past Jews now. Say this Nigerian show. So we like law. <laughs> Verse 20. 26, for we are all the children of God by faith. We are all 
in Christ Jesus. 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Keep the scripture. This is not water baptism. This is salvation. That's the real baptism. Every other baptism, if you enter water without salvation, you entered a dry sinner, you came out a wet sinner. Period. This is salvation. That's the real baptism. How can I say this? Jesus did not start baptism. Jesus met baptism. So baptism was from Judaism, a Jewish religious practice that Jesus, who came under the law, was subjected to fulfill the law for us so that we will not have to go through water baptism if you choose not to. Now, if you want to go through water baptism, no problem. I have a pool in the house. Put you inside, come out. You just did swimming exercise. It has no eternal value to your body. That's the truth. I was baptized in Ogbarida, Ogba River, Benin City. My father was the pastor. My grandpa was the We did baptism. Every church had a baptism in pool. But this is the real baptism. Baptism into the body of Christ. That's real baptism. If you choose to baptize, it's fine. But that if you are not baptized, you are not... Um, somebody says a prophetic action. I'm like, what are you talking about? One guy and I watch him. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? And it's hard to just change what you have believed for all your life. But the age of the lie doesn't make it truth. The age of the lie doesn't make it truth. Yeah. Next verse. Next verse. There is neither Jew, you see this, nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Bond nor free. Igbo people, there's, there's neither osu or non osu. Except you don't believe in this Bible. There is neither chauvinist nor feminist in Christ. It says, you look at it now. Is there now male nor female? It's not important. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. One in Christ Jesus. Next verse. And if ye be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. Who is Abraham's seed? If you are in Christ, then you are Jesus. That's what he's saying. For Jesus is the seed of Abraham. Christ is the seed of Abraham. So he's now saying, if you are in Christ, ye are Abraham's seed, as according to the promise. End of chapter 3. Let's have it in the message translation. Petty translation, you see it. <laughs> you crazy Galatians. <laughs> Did someone put a hex on you? Have you taken leave of your sense? Oh, Yahweh, are you mad? <laughs> they swear for you. Something crazy has happened. For it is obvious that you no longer have the crucified Christ in clear focus in your lives. His sacrifice on the cross was certainly said before you clearly enough. Next verse. Let me put this question to you. How did your new life begin? Was it by walking your heads off to please God? Or was it by responding to God's message to you? We are responders, not initiators. We didn't initiate the transaction. We are responding to the transaction. For whilst we were dead in sin, Christ died for us. So we are what? Receivers. We are responding to the finished work on the cross of Calvary. We are not initiators. I respond to his grace. That means it was Jesus who toasted me and I was now styling. I now responded. Uh -uh. You understand that the way... They're not, they're not the tosuna again. Brothers, that's so are wicked. None of you, you cannot relate. Hey, Mandela, Uncle, hey, God. <laughs> well, no, no, they toast again. You are a toast, babe, now. You can't respond. Hey, hey. That's what Jesus did for us. 
He was the one who was, because the gospel is not a threat message, it's a love letter. It's God that was writing you love letters and you responded to the message, period. Next verse. Are you going to continue this craziness? For only crazy people would think they could complete by their own effort what was begun by God. If you weren't smart enough or strong enough, you know, sense and strength, that you were not smart enough, you were not strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you could perfect it? You didn't start it. Why do you want to finish it? Next verse. Did you go through the whole painful learning process for nothing? It is not yet a total loss. But it certainly will be if you keep up with this madness. Next verse. Answer this question. Does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your lives, in your lives, you could never do for yourselves. Does he do these things because of your strenuous moral strivings or because you trust him to do them in you? Keep that scripture. So how do you grow? It's trusting God to do it in you. But the Bible says, work out your salvation no, with fear and trouble. Did you read the next verse? For it is God who works in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God that is doing the work. I'm just letting him do the work. Salvation is like surgery. You have to sleep for the surgeon to walk. How can you be doing surgery? Say, I'm, uh, 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 sir, it's not my liver. Put it back where. <laughs> See my kidney. See this guy. You. I'm watching you. You want to send my kidney to China? I'm awake. I'm, it doesn't work like that. Salvation is that you have to receive the anesthesia of, of rest in Christ. You have to receive the anesthesia of rest in Christ and let him do the work in you. Trust. You have to trust him to do the work in you. But no, some of you know. That is, surgeon, wow. Tear it away. No, no, no. No, no, no. You, ask, you want to destroy my figure. Put it. <laughs> and some of you have literally stood up from the surgeon's room and you're moving around and that's why you leave a mess everywhere you go to. I'm preaching strong, I know. So you're leaving a mess everywhere you go to. Why? You didn't let the surgeon finish that work. You are helping the surgeon to do the work. And that's why you are smelling. Because the surgeon hasn't finished. But the surgeon is so faithful. So he's always running after you. Lie down. Rest. Lie down. He doesn't leave you. He's running with you in the hospital. Lie down. Rest. Just relax. No, you define. No, let me. I'm not doing it again. He's following you. You go to the club, the surgeon, he say, Ah, you are smelling. No, let me fix this. So let him do it. That's how to grow spiritually. It's not you doing it, it's letting him do it. Is that clear? Just let the surgeon do the work. Some of you are fighting the surgeon. Hey, no, no, he can't work. You have to come to the place where you say, okay, I, because let me tell you, if you've ever gone through surgery, let me tell you what you did. You gave your life to the surgeon. That's what you did. Because you were not awake. You actually entrusted your life. You signed a document. That's that, take over. That's salvation. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I confess. Come into my heart. And what? Do your work. I wish that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's the truth that makes you free, that works on you. We will not let the truth work. We want to walk the truth. And what are you, what's wrong with you? I was speaking to a lawyer and said he lost one case. I said, why did you lose the case? He said, I just told my client, shut up. It was such a difficult task. Say, but she could not shut up in court. That whatever they ask you, do not answer. That all she needed to do was show up. Any question? 
The lawyer will say, client, uh, my Lord, my client doesn't find this question sensible. She can't respond. But he said, no, lawyer, I will speak. Let me even tell them my mind. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 lawyer, no, no I know. And let me speak my mind, though. I cannot even, she, this woman, I wish. Let me even tell you. And she, she spat her mind. And at the end of the day, there was no mind. Just go to the courtroom. Shut up. Are you guilty? No. Are you not guilty? Don't answer. What do you plead? Don't plead guilty. What do you plead? You plead the blood. Do you plead defeat? No. I plead the blood. That means it's on the blood. And once the judge sees the blood... But some of us, when we stand before God, God, let me explain. No, huh? let me explain. No, no Jesus, wait, it's not like I, 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 I really wanted to sin that day. But ah, you say if you know now, it was a rough day. It was a rough day. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> who told you to defend yourself when you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is the propitiation for yours? Who told you to defend yourself? Who told you? To even higher defense. You already have one in Christ. Is, it, is this thing not simple and clear enough? Because I actually think you need a pastor to confuse you. This is the message of the gospel. Gospel message. The thief on the cross did not ask God for forgiveness. <laughs> he just said, Jesus, Avana, remember me today. Very arrogant question. Very, very, uh, that's fatal. Faith is arrogant too. It, it, Jesus, ah, calm down now. Today, remember me. Oh. Jesus said, ah, see this guy, you. Today, remember, today we're together. That's it. The other one was saying, if you are the son of God, he has not believed you. You are sounding like the devil. If you are the son of God, why can't you just remove yourself from here? He was looking for some God. You know, you know that you are religious every time you're asking God to prove himself. Oh God. Oh, shit, money. I finished everything. No, I have some money. It's good stuff. I have some money. It's good stuff. Ah, it's good. That's good stuff. It's good stuff. You are really religious every time you're asking God, prove yourself because God has no point to prove. He already proved himself on the cross. Prove yourself. Lord, prove yourself in my life. Prove which he, has, he already did it too. That guy was religious on the cross. If you are the son of God, can't you command this thing to happen? This guy said, ah, I don't know why we're ever here like this. So. Me, I know that I'm a thief. I sin. Me, I don't know about you. But guy, just in case what you are saying is true, remember me today in your kingdom. End of this. Jesus said today, you will be with me. No baptism. No tithe. No restitution. No holy communion. Golden buzzer. The golden buzzer of the cross. Bam. No go to this. No. Straight. You are going with me. This is the message of the gospel. Too good to be true news that is actually extremely true. That is very true. Okay. Next verse, let's go, let's go. Let's, we can close in time. Don't these things happen among you just as they happened with Abraham? He believed God and that act of belief was turned into a life that was right with God. <laughs> Abraham didn't do righteousness. He was given righteousness. They are not the same. Next verse. Is it not obvious that you it's not the overs to you, rather, that persons who put their trust in Christ, not persons who put their trust in the law, are like Abraham, children of faith. So this chapter 3 is be like Abraham. When they say Abraham is the father of faith, it's not saying he's our father, because God is our father, not Abraham. It's the typology, the first is a pattern. That's meaning of the word Abba. Pattern. is a pattern that we follow. That the way Abraham is. 
So we are not children of Abraham, we're children of God. When, it's, when you hear children of Abraham in scripture, it's talking about pattern of Abraham. You understand that? We are not children of Abraham, we are pattern of Abraham. We are children of God. You understand that? Verse 8. I'll deal with that another day. But I think I preach complex messages very simple. I hear that all the time. It's very simple. See, see verse 8. It was all laid out beforehand in Scripture that God could set things right with non-Jews by faith. Scriptures anticipated this in the promise to Abraham. All nations will be blessed in you. Jews are not Jews. All nations. Next verse. So those who live by faith are blessed along with Abraham who lived by faith. He... Are you, did you people see that thing? Fatima, can you see that? It's not a new doctrine. Say this great message, all this new doctrine. It's not a new doctrine. This is the only doctrine. This is no new doctrine. Next verse, let's go. Next verse, next verse. And that means that anyone who tries, hey, this, this particular verse, it gets us to do me. Anyone who tries to live by his own efforts, independent of God, is doomed to failure. Scriptures backs this up. Utterly cost is every person who fails to carry out every detail written in the book of the law. <laughs> Next verse. Okay. I want us to read this verse eh? slowly. The obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with God that way. The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. <laughs> Do doings, people. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God has done for you. So how do you do things for God? Receiving what he has done for you. This is Bible. This is what I call proper orthotomiology. Lines upon lines, precept upon precept, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's it. Next verse. Habakkuk had it right. The person who believes God is set right by God. And that's the real life. <laughs> it's not, I know they do fake life. The real life is that I, I just believe what God has done. And I'm set right with God. Real life. It's not simple. Rule keeping does not naturally evolve to living by faith but only perpetuates itself in more and more rule-keeping. So rule-keeping not the end. A fact observed in Scripture, the one who does these things, rule-keeping, continues to live by them. Next verse. Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating cost life by absorbing it completely into himself. Do you remember the Scripture that says, cost is everyone that hangs on a tree? That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. You say there again, you curse, they worry you. What are you talking about? He became a curse and dissolved. I don't know which you, the, your father's house, your mother's house. We, we, we don't know the tire for those prayers. It's like your father's house and mother's house is so big. It's bigger than the blood of Jesus now. Yeah. Every day, the father's house, your mother's house. What is the problem? You make the devil feel so powerful. And now, because of what, because of that, the air is cleared 
And now we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available to non-Jews too. We are all able to receive God's life, his spirit, and in, in and with us by believing just the way Abraham. You see why I said the promised spirit? His spirit. Aye. Okay, on Sunday. I'll deal with some things on Sunday. Aye. I'll deal with some things on Sunday. Next, 15. Yeah. Friends, let me give you an example from everyday affair of the free life I'm talking about. Once a person's will has been ratified, no one else can annul it or alter it. Next verse. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his descendant. You will observe the scripture in the careful language of a legal document. does not say to descendants. Referring to everybody in general. But to your descendant, the noun, note, is singular. Referring to Christ. <laughs> I love message. It is explained now. Note. <laughs> Just in case you are not understanding, the noun, note, is singular, referring to Christ. Like this thing I'm talking about here, don't be it's Christ. So the child that God promised Abraham is not Isaac, it's Christ. <laughs> the first time I said this somewhere, Philip was there, he shouted, What now? <laughs> Many years ago, I went to teach somewhere. We didn't even know, oh, but thank you very much for being an encouragement. The time I was so depressed, he sent me a message. Pastor Fresh, I know what God is going to do through you, and it's going to be loud. I still have that message. I still have that message. I was so depressed. He just said, p -flow, stay strong. <laughs> Somebody was preaching my message that he said, p -flow. This guy is, and the guy I was not preaching it to, I'm like, hey, Jesus. <sighs> God was nudging me to do this. It was difficult for me. And he's, that message has stayed with me, but there was a class I was teaching and he was there and I said this I said this like four five years ago and he screamed my God <laughs> you know beautiful keep me your prayers I'm working on my books I'm working on my yeah. books working on my books yeah on my books yeah it's, no, we, we should we should have the books because some of the things I teach I've not found them in any book if you think I copy message to preach go and check around you will now know that these guys, who can, who, how do you preach the, the, the creditor, the prophet, and the oil? Go and find it. Which book writes that story and brings Jesus out of it? And that's the work of the New Testament Christocentric pastor. Your ability to bring Jesus from a text in the Old Testament. And to show Jesus like Samson who destroyed two pillars and that was the shadow of Jesus on the cross. That was the shadow of Jesus on the cross when Samson died. Destroying the law and the prophet. And watch Samson. He killed more people in his death. Look at Jesus. He saved more people with his life. His death on his cross. So even Samson was the shadow of Jesus on the cross. That's why in spite of him dying with suicide, you find Samson in the book of Hebrews, the hall of fame. Samson by faith. So... So suicide doesn't take anybody to hell. The rejection of Jesus takes everybody to hell. Suicide is just a wicked and a selfish thing. You cut your destiny short, but that is expressed to hell. What is Samson doing in Hebrews chapter 11? What is Rahab doing in Hebrews chapter 11? This thing is faith in Christ Jesus. And you get the buzzer. Bang, bam. And they cannot reverse the, <laughs> the, the, those things that fly around. <laughs> Sorry? Confetti. confetti. Thank you. You can't reverse the confetti. Who will come out? Oh, no, 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 no. I think it was Pastor Larry who said, the Bible says anyone who believes in Christ has moved from death to life. And there is no way where the Bible now says they can move from life <laughs> to death. <laughs> There's, there's, there's really no place like that. So I don't understand where you have not moved from. Like, can you see a child who grows from being a child to an adult? You now go back to being a child. No, what are you talking about? 
That's what Nicodemus was talking like. Can I enter my mother's room? Ah, this guy, dull of understanding. Common entrance. Where's well on. <laughs> next verse, next verse. Next verse 17. This is the way I interpret this. A will earlier ratified by God is not annulled by an addendum. An added attachment. 430 years later. So Moses, if one use reggae spoil our blues, but they, they don't finish the album already. Moses said, let me add one track to it. Now it cause problem. Bonus track. May do so dumb jazzy. He just at like us, 430 years later, Moses wanted to add something to it. Hereby negating the promise of the will. Next verse. No, this addendum with its instructions. So the addendum even has instructions. God punish the devil. <laughs> I tell you what is wrong with you. They gave something by promise. You went to add something to it. Its instructions and regulations. Uh -uh. No, this addendum with its instructions and regulations has nothing to do with the promised inheritance in the will. That means you remove the addendum and this rubbish from it. Kind of a nonsense. Add file, attachment, join with it, not supposed to defile. Verse 19. The purpose of the law was to keep a sinful people in the way of salvation until Christ, the descendant, came, inheriting the promises and distributing them to us. Obviously, the law was not a first-hand encounter with God. It was arranged by angelic messengers through a middleman, Moses. So that law was angel and Moses that did it, not God. But the Bible, I'll show you. <laughs> Next verse. Next verse, 20. But if there is a middleman as there was at Sinai, then the people are not dealing directly with God. Are they? But the original promise is the direct blessing of God received by faith. So God does not do middleman. God does faith. In Christ Jesus. Everybody, on Sunday I said every vessel had oil. Go and listen to that message again. No? Every vessel had oil. So don't do shakara for me. The oil went day in my life. Not the same oil went day in your life. I'm not inferior to you. No, 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 no. Same, same. Every vessel had oil. Stop doing as if not you there with oil and gas. I carry the oil too. Take, 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 take to my back to the scripture. But the original promise is the direct blessing of received by faith. I don't have a middleman. God doesn't do middleman. For there's one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Period. I'm not your middleman before God. No. I know they do that job. No. My job is to show you the middleman, Christ. Believing in him. That's it. People think pastors have extra faith. It's the same faith. The same Holy Ghost. There's no pastoral Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, Marco, yo, now that you're becoming a pastor, I give you the Kenaria Holy Ghost. <laughs> say the way you see, don't see the way Adam the Wakala is. A Holy Ghost, not the Kenaria. <laughs> not lie, yo. It's the same Holy Ghost. Say MVP. It's, MVP is different. I has a ministerial Holy Ghost. No! There's nothing like that. The bishopric Holy Ghost. No, it's the same Holy Ghost, though. There's no special Holy Ghost, though. There's no banana ghost. It's Holy Ghost. It's not banana ghost. Next. <laughs> eh? Oh, yeah, Holy Ghost Pro Max. <laughs> this is an upgraded Holy Ghost Pro Max. You know, you see, I use the iPhone 12. One of our members, if he, if he buys, if any new phone comes, he will buy one for me. So, God bless him very well. Uh, God bless him. Uh, so I would have been using one palazza now. <laughs> Every time there's a new brand, he will, he's, his job, he wants, uh, my pastor can be using the So, 12. So, this 12. But there's the 12 Pro. That big one. 
I like this one because I can put it in my pocket easily. There's no Holy Ghost Pro Max. So, uh, this one is the upgraded Holy Ghost. Well done. <laughs> See? Is not There's no 61 gig Holy Ghost. This guy is. Say 60. Say. <laughs> this guy is, say this, the, the 256. We have unlimited Holy Ghost. Glory. Unlimited. Spirit. Unlimited Holy Ghost. Not. Not, not the, 60, the, the 16 gig Holy Ghost. No. No. 21 gig Holy Ghost. No. Download as you like. If you don't download, that's your problem. But it's available for the downloading. All you can eat. All you can eat. There's no all 20 gig holy ghost. That guy, that girl, she did like two gig holy ghost, so never really. Now you want marry. She never a gig. Ah uh, no. A gig never. Ah uh, ah. Uh, she can't. Ah uh, ah. Uh, she can't. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? I say, I, 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 don't you feel stupid when you say these things? <laughs> There's no 16 gig Holy Ghost. We all have the unlimited. For the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Spirit of God. But I mean, you have the Holy Ghost. You don't stir the Holy Ghost. We stir up the Holy Ghost by praying in the Spirit. Engage it. Palando. Quedededo. Spritanandre. Kojate. Palika. Kido. Boza. Yes. Emmanuel has taken my goes. I leave it. You know, here. Boza, boza, boza. Is it your own? That's, that's what you use the work it. Have it. Spirit of God is within you. Prophesy. I want a church where I hear that. Ah, some of your members just started laying hands on the sick one. And they are all well. Hey, that's it. No, it's not a pastor's job. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not that the ones who are called, are anointed. No, no, no. That believe. Believe. If such is the case, if such is the case, is the law then an anti promise, a negation of God's will for us? Not at all. It supposed the purpose was to make obvious to everyone that we are in ourselves out of right relationship with God. And therefore, to show us the futility of devising some religious system for getting by our own efforts. What we can only get by waiting in faith for God to complete his promise. For if any kind of rule keeping had power to create life in us, we would certainly have gotten it by this time. Some of you have actually tried. You've kept, the, you have kept some rules and regulations. If he used to bring life, you would have had it by now. But see, your sin management program is not bringing life. Next verse. Next verse. Until the time when we were mature enough to respond freely in faith to the living God, we were carefully surrounded and protected by the Mosaic law. Next verse. The law was like those Greek tutors with which you are familiar Who's escort, who escort children to school and protect them from danger or distraction, making sure the children will really get to the place they set out for. Next verse, see, see, see. But now we have arrived at our destination. <laughs> you have arrived at your, so a law can now be going. But now we have arrived at our destination. Next verse. By faith in Christ, you are in direct relationship with God. Your baptism in Christ was not just washing you up for a fresh start. No, it also involved dressing you in an adult faith wardrobe. So what is baptism? Faith wardrobe. Faith in Jesus. It's from the word baptizo. Christ's life the fulfillment of God's original promise. Next verse. Let's close. Let's close. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew, non-Jew, slave, free, male, female. Among us, you are all equal. That is, 
we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, since you are Christ's family, then you are Abraham's famous descendant. <laughs> Uh, you are Abraham's famous descendant. Is according to the covenant promises. Hallelujah. Done. Oh, we're not out of message. We're just out of time. And I'm very sure you were blessed by that word. Please follow us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching and you have not accepted Jesus into your heart, I want to lead you to Christ. By a simple prayer, say, with my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that Jesus is Lord. I accept you into my heart today. Flood my life with your light, with your life and your peace in Jesus' name. Satan, I am out of your claws. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. I decree and declare, I am saved. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that he died for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Now that you are saved, please find any of our churches around the word to log in and keep fellowship and keep hearing the word of his grace. We encourage you to respond by way of giving. The, the account details are on the screen. Please give. And just respond to the word of his grace until I come your way again. It's your boy, Pastor Flourish from the Logic Nation. Never forget, God loves you more than the devil hates you. Have a flourishing week ahead of you. In Jesus' name, with great grace. Bless him.